Hello. I'm going to read some more Broken Twigs Farewell to Fairy Forest, written by Charlotte Taylor and illustrated by Kezia Crossley. Unfortunately, this time Twigs is really outdone herself. Everything is on fire and all the poor fairies are rushing around trying to put it out. This doesn't sound like it's going to end well, does it? Having said that, I'm really excited to find out what happens in Chapter 6. And it's called Saying Sorry Sometimes Isn't Enough. When dusk came, Twigs decided to pluck up the courage to venture out and see what was happening. As she flew closer to home, everything seemed eerily quiet. No birds were singing, no insects were buzzing, and not a fairy could be seen. When she reached the communal glade by the forest lake, Twigs's heart leapt in her throat. The first fae she saw was the tall, majestic leader, Queen Iris, who was now leaning wearily against the trunk of the old sacred oak tree, looking anything but majestic. Her graceful golden wingtips were scorched, and her delicate purple gown was now ripped to shreds and smudged with soot. Her beautiful long mahogany hair, which had always shone in the sunlight, now hung listless and limp around her tired, teary eyes. She was barefooted, and as Twigs took in every detail of her queen's appearance, she saw many bleeding cuts on her arms and face. Warily, Twigs continued to look around at all the other exhausted faces, and she realised that every fairy was in the same state of disarray as the queen. Every single fairy, except her. Twigs, come here, the fairy queen ordered, composing herself and amending her posture so that she stood proud and tall. Twigs jumped because she hadn't realised that she'd been spotted. Hanging her head in shame, she approached the queen, dragging her feet as she went. She would have to talk eloquently and fast to get out of this mess. I'm so disappointed in you, Twigs, Queen Iris continued with a steely coolness. You have gone too far this time. I, I'm so, so sorry, gulped Twigs. Oh, you know, I threw the blackberry at Clara, but honestly... It's her fault that she dropped the shell in the machine. Un Unbelievable, spluttered Clara. How dare you blame me? You are despicable. This is all you do, Twigs, hurt people. It's always someone else's fault or someone else's responsibility. Why should you bunk off all the time and do what you want? We're done with you. You're done with me? I think you'll find I've never been bothered with you, sneered Twigs. With any of you do-gooders, she added, looking around at the assembled witnesses. You're boring and so irritating and pathetic all the time. You're like pets, obedient to their master, with no will of their own. Honestly, it's cringeworthy. <coughs> No, you impertinent fool! It's called respect. Maybe you should try it sometime, Clara spat. Respect? Twigs taunted. She'd almost forgotten the Queen as she continued to goad Clara. You're so annoying and so needy, always whining for people to be your friend. At least I have friends, retorted Clara hotly. Nobody wants to be in a mile of your sorry self. No one wants you here, you know. They should have left you where they found you. No. <sighs> Audible gasps were heard from the other fae folk who were witnessing this confrontation. An awkward silence fell throughout the glade as Clara's face flushed. and She looked to the floor. What? asked Twigs. What's that meant to mean, you mewling? Quiet, stormed the Queen as she took turns to glare at the shame-faced Clara who refused to meet her gaze and the insolent Twigs who stared back with defiance. Queen Iris had never looked so furious. 
Her eyes glinted with anger and an immense sense of power that set her aside from the fairies over whom she ruled. Clara murmured an apology to the Queen, who ignored her while continuing to glare at Twigs. Stealing food, laziness, harsh words and unkindness are all behaviours we have witnessed time and time again with you, Twigs. We had hoped to teach you to become a better fairy, to value those around you. You enjoy teasing others like a cat may tease a mouse, and you have no thought for others' feelings. Quite honestly, Clara is right. We have had enough. Her poise broke as she continued. For goodness sake, you silly, selfish child. Someone could have been killed today. Do you realise that? You could have killed someone. You still have so much to learn. Fabian will take months to heal. He broke his hip and cracked his eye socket. You did not even stop to help him up once you knocked him down. That is inexcusable. Twigs looked up in alarm. This did not sound promising. And she glanced around the other fairies who all stared back at her with a mix of regret judgment and frustration. As of now, the Queen continued, composed once more, you no longer have a home in Fairy Forest. The fire may have been put out, but you will not be a part of the rebuilding of our community. Until you prove to us that you have learned what it is to be a good individual and you can prove to us that you deserve to be part of our family once again, I declare you banished from Fairy Forest. <sighs> Twigs heard urgent whispers coming from the crowd of fairies around her, whilst they all became anxious and twitchy. Cross as they were, they hadn't expected such a harsh punishment from the Queen, who was known to be forgiving. Twigs's eyes filled with tears as she gazed imploringly up at her Queen, all signs of defiance now gone. I'll try much harder. She sobbed, I'll work hard and I'll try my best to be better. But her desperate pleas fell on deaf ears. The Queen's gaze was stoic, distant and cold as she raised, raised her hands and murmured some words in the old Fay language. Twigs felt a sharp stabbing pain in the middle of her back. It was unbearable. Ah! As she cried out, falling to her knees. And then it stopped just as quickly, like ripping off a plaster. Twigs looked up at Clara, who looked away. Then she looked at Penelope, who also looked uncomfortable before turning away. As Twigs looked up at all the fairies who had witnessed her punishment, she realised that not one of them would now look her in the eye, whereas before they'd been so bold. Now go, ordered the Queen. Do not dare to return until your lessons have been learned. Twigs stood and took one last long beseeching look at Queen Iris, silently begging her to change her mind and to find her softer side once more. But the Queen turned her gaze away. Twigs felt as if her heart would break and she turned around to fly up in the air. Only she couldn't. Now she realised why the other fairies wouldn't look at her. The pain she'd felt was her final shameful punishment. Her wings had been removed by her monarch. Her beautiful, treasured wings were no longer there. Crying out in despair, she ran, humiliated into the gloom of the trees closest to her, thankful for the concealment they offered her as she sought to hide her disgrace. A moment of silence followed, while the fairies tried to understand what had just happened. Then one by one, they returned to their makeshift homes for the night, ready to begin rebuilding in the morning. Left alone, in the moonlight, Iris shut her eyes. One single lonely tear escaped, leaving a shiny sad trail as it journeyed down her soot-smudged cheek.
Oh my goodness. That was rather sad, wasn't it? Poor Twigs, banished and not got her wings. I do hope she manages to redeem herself and come back to the fairies. I'll see you again soon for chapter seven.